room. This video will be fun. It'll be interesting. You'll learn things. You'll learn how processes work, or at least semi-modern process. Okay, it's not a modern processor, but it's more modern than the 6502, so it counts. Um, so, uh, it'll get very technical. I'll try to explain it in, in the best of terms that I can. I think my phone just went off, but hopefully you couldn't hear it. But uh, anyway, probably it was YouTube saying, oh, you've uh, you've got a, you're starting your stream. So um, in any case, let me, oh, uh, that's not going to work, is it? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop these down here really quick. I came a little bit more prepared this time, so it works out. All right. So, um, I think we should just get right to it. So let me turn this on. Make sure everything's good. Uh, there it goes. Yay. All right, so. Uh, where to begin? I guess we should begin by explaining how exceptions work on the 68K, which is used by the Sega Genesis. So, so as you can see right here, I've I've got what they call the vector table for the for this for the 68k processor. Um, so basically, whenever um, basically whenever something happens that warrants uh, the processor's uh, attention, there's a table of places to jump to uh, depending on what it is. Some of these some of these things are good. Okay. So, for example, um, you have interrupts. So you have uh, these things here, like uh, level 3, level 4. The Genesis uses two of them, or at least the standard Genesis. Maybe the 32X or the Sega CD might, might use more. But, but basically, um, I believe it's level 4 and 6 are the horizontal and vertical interrupts, uh, respectively. So, so sometimes exceptions are good. It's like, oh, hey, you know, um, we're at H blank. You could do something now. Or we're at V blank. You can do something now. But a lot of the time, you know, um, exceptions are bad. And we're going to look over them and, and I'm going to tell you how, how they work. Um, so, b b before we start with that, though, I, I, I do want to point out something. Um, basically, uh, when I was starting to get everything prepared for this video, I, I took a look at, at my exception handler that, that I wrote three years ago. Uh, I, I did with Battletech. I was like, okay, I know a little bit about, about the, the Genesis and I know a little bit more about how these things work. Um, and I found out that there was uh, one or two nasty bugs in the code. I was like, oh, I used this for Battletech, for Echo, for Sonic 3 Volume 3, for Sonic 3D Blast. Fuck. <laughs> So, I, I mean, it wasn't really bad, but but um, one of the vectors, one of the exceptions, just fell on its ass, and and, and I'll and I'll and I'll show you why. But um, I'm trying to figure out what what uh, which direction I should go first. It's like, should I kind of explain how all this works, or should I just go and, and kind of show why it failed? Uh, I think what we'll do is is I'll go over all these first. And then I'll show you what went wrong with version 2 and how I fixed it in version 3. So, um, so let's go over the exceptions and, and what I do to, to fix them. So what I got here is, um, is, the, is the table and some code. So I'm trying to figure out the best... The, the, I should have put like an outline and 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 just gone gone based on that outline, but I always tend to just um, I always tend to be very off the cuff when it comes to these sorts of things. I tend to be very disorganized, or at least organized enough to do this. So, in any case, um, all right. So, so you're you're probably wondering why do you need to write an exception handler? Uh, it's because when you're corrupting a game on the Genesis. Um, unlike the 6502, you know, where it's just going to keep trying to execute, or it might jam the CPU, the the 68K is sophisticated enough to where if it runs into something that it doesn't like, it'll actually throw an exception. And then you can 
properly debug it or handle it in some other way. So that's the nice thing about gen uh, about the Genesis is is um, it has the means to do that. It makes it very easy for uh, developers to to debug and fix their code, and we can use it to our advantage to make better corruptions. So that's always nice. Um, so so basically, the 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 68K has three different groups when when it comes to exceptions. You have group zero. And those are the really bad exceptions. Those are the ones where it's like stop everything in its tracks. We got to take care of this first. So that's group zero. That's um, basically bus error, whoops, uh, bus error, and address error. And we'll, we'll we'll go over those. Then you have group one. And group one um, is kind of like that, but um, basically, how to put this? So group one and two. Um, are, are obviously uh, diff different from group zero. Group zero saves a lot more into the stack, so whenever you encounter an, an exception, you have to kind of keep track of, of what happened. So like the program counter, so, which keeps track of where the code, like what addresses are executing, like like where you are in the code executing. Um, and there's also, for group zero, it also saves things like the address it was accessing and, and, and uh, a few more bits of information. So so um, if we look here, we're going to see there's group zero. So it's like, um, so reset. We don't care about reset, obviously. Address error, bus error. So, and processing begins within two clock cycles. So it's like that. So one is like trace, interrupt, um, illegal, and privileged, uh, th th those sorts of um, exceptions. And then uh, two are are uh, are trap trappy uh, check instructions and uh, divide by zero, and um, you'll 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 see these once we go through them. But um, but if you look at group zero, like uh, so so you can see here, group one and two, uh, the stack frame. So this is what saves to the stack. So just program counter stat register, boom, you're done. If you see here. There's a bunch of shit. So you have four extra bytes um, of of stuff to go through. So so you, when um, when you're writing an exception handler, you gotta take into account that there's a different stack size for for group zero. So so um, when when we go through this, keep keep that in mind. So um, the way that the stack works, just as a heads up, is it's I, I guess it's called like a reverse or backward stack, where where you start from the very end of the stack in in terms of memory addresses, and and then and then once things are pushed to the stack, it's it kind of goes backwards. So so for example, um, uh, that's not the right. There we go. Um, yeah, I I should really learn how to. Uh, yeah, it's not that big of a deal. So, um, in any case, um, let me see here. I could always fix that in post. Uh, so, it's nothing bad, but anyway. So, for example, let, let me let me do this down here. Okay, so, so let's just say... How am I going to represent this by chatting things out? Oh, I, I see a hello from Joshua. Hello. I just now saw that, so... I should really look at my, my, my chat window more often. Um, So, let's just say that you have something where it's like... They add like 1, 2, 3, 4 to... Or like 1, 2, 3, 4 to, to the stack, okay? If you add something else to the stack, it would be, um, you know... You add like five, six, seven, eight to the stack. It, it would add it in front of it, so it's like five, six, seven, eight, like that. Oops. Well, okay, one, two, three, four. So, um, and then you add something else to the stack, like A, B, C, D, like you know, A, B, C, D. So, so it adds things to the stack like that. So, so, so keep that in mind that the pointer, like the location to where the stack starts, will decrease each time something's added to the stack. So. A lot of earlier processors did that. The 6502 does that as well. So, so something to keep in mind when when we're looking at this. So, 
Um, let's go ahead and start off with the first two vectors. So, um, and this was something I, that I didn't know when, when I wrote version 2. Actually, I want to give a, a small history lesson before we begin. So, originally, when I did the Sonic 2 cor uh, corruptions, like way back, like 10 plus years ago, uh, I didn't know enough about, about the Genesis to, to know what I was doing. I, I just knew that if you hit an illegal instruction, if you tried to return from that exception, it would just keep executing the illegal instruction. So what I did was I I edited... I, I, I did it in a very stupid way. I, I modified the program counter in the stack and it incremented it by two so that I wouldn't go to the same thing each and every time. So, so it at least tried to... Execute and it worked, but um, I didn't take into account the different stack size for for group one for group zero. Didn't take into account group two at all, which which uh, which actually increments the program counter on its own. It was very crude, very poorly coded. Um, I was still very much a novice when it came when it came to assembly and and understanding processor architectures. I'm still a bit of a novice compared to some people, but. Um, but in any case, um, that was version one, and it worked kind of. It worked well enough. I am when I get my computer upgraded, I am going to revisit the the Sonic Two corruptions and remaster them because there's some things I'm not happy with, um, uh, like uh, the video quality and the emulation quality, and the fact that I'm using a shitty exception handler that that that, that I coded without knowing what the fuck I was doing. So, so um. Whenever I get this upgraded, and you know, I've I've started buying parts for it, so you know, I've got the got got the new motherboard here, so that'll be fun. That'll be fun. So, um, in any case, um, so, uh, let me see here, um, so let's start off with um. Bus errors and address errors. So, so, so we'll start off with these two because they're both the only true, except for reset, obviously. They're the only two um, uh, group zero, um, group zero. Um, yeah, that's what we're going to do. I, I think I figured out which direction uh, to go with this. So um, basically, uh, they're, they're the only two group zero. Uh, exceptions that that we have to deal with. So we'll start off with bus error. So a bus error is something where um, a, a device or resource outside the processor tells the processor, "Oh hey, that's not a valid memory access. You fucked up. Now you need to handle it." So here's the thing about bus error and the Genesis. And I didn't realize this at at, at one point. I was like, okay, so. So, so basically, um, bus error can only be triggered by something outside the processor. So I'm like, I don't think that there's any way to trigger it through corruption. So, so if it's um, something that is triggered by an outside source, then there has to be a pin or something on the processor that that um, is some sort of input to so that this device can say, hey, oh, hey, bus error, and and then and then uh, the processor is like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll stop what I'm doing and, and, and handle this. And if you look at a pinout for um, for the uh, for, for the, you know, the, the 68K, and I'm going to see if, if I can, there we go. So this here is the 68K, all right? And if you look right here, uh, so you can maybe see my, uh, my mouse cursor here. You see that B error? That is bus error. So, so that is the pin that a device would use to signal that there's a bus error and, and to trigger the exception. Now, I don't know how many people here have any sort of electrical engineering experience. I, I don't really. I, I only know the, the, the very, very basics. But you can see that B error is connected to something called VCC. And 
what that means is it's not co it's technically not connected to anything it's just getting a steady voltage input so what that means is the genesis cannot fizz uh, unless you hack the unless you hardware hack the, gen the genesis the genesis cannot get a signal to cause a bus error so we don't need to worry about it so to, to, to put this in perspective if if you're on your genesis and your genesis somehow triggers a bus error your genesis is fucking haunted because there's no way that it could do that there's something seriously wrong with your genesis if if a bus error is like asserted because it's it's not connected to anything it's just connected to voltage so um with that said just just for completeness sake i i do in, in, include that in in my code so uh going back here i'm going to click the right window this time um so basically um so you can see here bus error we're going we're going to do 40 so um i should probably switch back to, to uh, input there so um and then address error is also 40 that that's that, that's the group zero vector so why is it 40 why why would i put it in 40 why why not somewhere else the thing is um i could put it in the actual rom space which starts at like 200 but i, I didn't feel comfortable with that because um it's going to be different for each game so it'd be a pain in the ass to find you know um to find, uh, I can't think straight because um, apparently I have to use the restroom here in a, in, in a second. Um, it it so yeah. I'm quick quick five minute break because that's the thing about having like a caffeine addiction. Um, run notepad. Uh, um, give me like two seconds. Because it's hard to concentrate when your bladder is like uh, screaming at you. So give me like two seconds here. Sorry about that. So, uh, where was I? So, um, so basically, the uh, so I was going over bus error, and essentially, it's impossible for that to be triggered on the Genesis because it's not physically connected to any sort of interface, just connected to it's just connected to VCC. So, so, but I still, again, you just include the vector, just cause. I mean, I, I I could get rid of it. I guess it's it's not a huge deal, but, um. I don't know, just for completeness 
sake, I, I include it. So let's go over address error because that's the big one. That's the that's the one that um, is probably the most complicated to get around, and, and you'll see why. So what is an address error? So this is something that happens inside the processor that's like, oh, you fucked up. You read, wrote, or jumped to an odd location. Okay. So what that means is, let's just say, for example, that um, so so at so addresses in the the in any 68k system like like the Genesis are something that's called word lined. Okay. What that means is um, the the last the the last bit in the address has to to be zero. In other words, the address has to be even because it's 16 bits. So it's 16 bits aligned with even numbers. So. Um, Kind of silly if you ask me, but that's how the 68k works. So, um, so, so that's one thing that you have to keep in mind. So, so if you access, jump, access, whatever, any address that is odd, it throws up the address exception. So, so, um, so there's a few things to keep in mind. Um, one, uh, this is a group zero. Um, this is a group zero uh, exception. So you're going to have a large stack pointer. It's going to be eight bytes longer than, than, than the standard exception stack pointer. So, and here's the thing about the RTE, in, the RTE instruction. So we're, we're going to look at the RTE instruction here. The RTE only accounts for group one and two exceptions. So it only pulls those three byte, those three bytes, three bytes, because you got the program counter and the stash re register. Those three bytes off the stack. So, 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 so to go here again. So RTE only accounts for this. It doesn't account for this. So, so the first thing that you have to do is you have to adjust the stack pointer forward so that it, so that it's only. Um, so it's only pointing to the standard first part of the stack. It's only at three bytes. To do this, you need to add eight to the stack pointer. So that's what we do first. Okay. So uh, going back here. So uh, just one thing to note. This is what I what I wrote for BattleTech and and all the other Genesis games up up until now. This is what I had to fix over the weekend. So. But but we'll 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 look at this first. So this is group zero, okay. So this is where it jumps to. So you see this is add Q, add quick, long. So that's a uh, thirty-two bit because um, uh, program counters are thirty-two bits long. So um, so you're gonna add eight to a seven. A seven is the stack pointer register. It's a special register. That's where the stack is, is stored. Always going to be stored there. So you have you have eight data registers and eight address reg registers. So um, and of course A7 is the eighth address register and it's special. So so you add eight there. So so that kind of in terms of the stack turns it into like a into like a group you know uh, one or two uh, you know, uh, stack reference, step pointer reference, so or whatever you don't want to call it. So, so that's important. You have to do that. Now, you're probably thinking in your head, "Oh, you're probably not. You're probably not." But um, but there might be some of you that that's thinking, "Okay, so what? If, what if you jump to an odd instruction, and um, and." You, you add two, if you add two to an odd instruction, it's still going to be odd. So what's going to happen is, is you're, you're going to keep trying to add two to the program counter in the stack and keep trying to return for the exception. And it's like, oh wait, no, this is this is odd again. What's going on? And, and it'll just keep firing the address um, exception error. So 
I came up with something clever. So, before I get into that, I, I want you to take a look at my code. And I, I was bash, I was, I was metaphorically bashing my head against the wall when I saw this. I was like, how could I be so stupid? So, I, I, I still wonder to this day how I managed to fuck up so bad. So, if you look here, it does the, it says the add to the sack pointer, and then it does a return to exception, and all the code that I that was meant for 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 this particular this is a coding stream I'm very I'm sorry that you're lost I'm trying to explain it the, the the best that I can if you have any questions if you're like I don't understand this then 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 by all means <laughs> but you know you you might learn something here so so just to recap we're going over um address errors because the Genesis hates it when you execute or read from an odd address because everything is dealt in 16 bits and that's two bytes and and anything divided by two is even so if it's odd it's like fuck you basically so to, to put it in layman's terms if you do anything on an odd address the genesis is like fuck you i'm throwing an exception and it's a very special exception because there's a lot more to it than than a standard exception so um so to, to, to put it in layman's terms so so, um, so my old code um, was fucked up. So I'm I'm not too sure why I did it like this, but um, I'm I'm still kind of scratching my head on how I managed to 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 really to, uh, I managed to fuck up so bad. But what I had here was so this was correct. I'm do, I'm, I'm doing well so far. But I, for some reason, I put an RTE here. I think I did this for bus error, which doesn't exist on the Genesis anyway. <laughs> and I, I, I just I, I just screwed up. So to give you an idea of what happens, uh, I'm going to pull up um, Regan here. Because that's a nice debugger. And I am going to load a Genesis ROM, which, honestly, it should not have done that. It should have, you know, I, I want to... I really wish it would stop, you know... Maybe I want my file open dialog to be on the second monitor, but it's being stupid. Okay, so, um, not a big deal, not a big deal. So, I want to go here, I think? Okay, so we're going to load up Battletech address error gen, And it's just going to be a, bla a black screen, because it's, it's infinite looping, because it's continuously crashing over and over and over again. So, we're going to look at the code, and I'm going to explain... What what's happening? To, you know, in, in layman's terms, I'm I'm gonna try to explain it to the best of my ability. So we're gonna open up the uh, debugger. Okay. So um, we're going to where's stop? Or we could just do one step. There we go. That worked. All right. So we're going to reset. So this resets it to 200. This is just a you know test instruction. It's it's um. I think I think when the Genesis initializes, um, you have to make sure that certain things are ready. So so it's it's making sure that everything is initialized and then it'll continue operations. But what I did, we do one more step. I did a branch always instruction to two zero f. And in case you don't know, f is fifteen. That's odd. That's odd. So what's going to happen? It's going to run through uh, the address bus exception. So it's going to vector over to see that's that's wrong. You don't want it to, to go there. So um, you don't see it for some reason because of how this debugger works, but um, pretend that it just executed this. So so it just did that instruction. Okay? So so it's it's trying to have proper stack alignment to so that when you return from exception, it pushes everything back in the, into the right place. Because remember, RTE only does those those three byte exceptions. It doesn't do the eleven byte extensions that that um that a, a group zero exception would do. Now here's the problem. It was supposed to run this, but I put an RTE here because I'm a dumbass. So. <laughs> So 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 it's like okay, return from exception. So so it goes back. I'm like, oh hey, we're at two zero f again. Guess what's gonna happen? Oh, address error, and it keeps doing this again and again and again and again and again and again and again. 
Now, for the group one exceptions, I I ran the code that was meant for address error. So when you hit like an illegal instruction, for example, it'll do all this fun stuff. So, <clears throat> so basically, um, I, I don't know why I did it that, that way. It, it was really fucking dumb, but I fixed it. So, so let's go over um, the fixed code and, 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 and I'll show you how this works. So um, we're gonna close this out. Uh, we're gonna minimize you again. So, so, so this code here is all bad. So let's look at the good, at the good code and, and how it should work. So you can see that we still have the the stack alignment. Okay. So we're adding eight so that you know when you return from exception, it put it puts the program counter and everything back to where it should go. That's very important. Now. This this is where the genius comes in. The, I was very proud of, of this solution when I did it. This is what they call a bit test. So all this does is just test a bit um, in a byte or, or in a word or, or wherever. So what this does, so so you so you add you 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 add you know the um, uh, eight to to, to to the stack. Then what you're going to do is you're going to test bit zero, and bit zero is going to determine whether or not it is even or odd. If it's one, it's odd. If it's zero, it's even. P pretty basic stuff. You can ma imagine that in your head, you know, because if you talk about binary, the least significant bit is one. If there's no one, it's even. If there's one, it's, it's odd. So, and what you're going to do is you're going to test this bit at whatever the stack pointer is pointing to plus five because because the the bit that we want you, you have to you have to remember that um that this stack pointer oh i i guess there's 16 bit values that that's right so so basically i, I was thinking byte values when i was talking about the size of, uh, of the stack that's being pushed um technically it's um yeah, so there there are three 16-bit values, so it's so it's actually six bytes. So, but if 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 you go to like plus five, uh, I can't remember here. Hold up. So, so status register is pointing here. So so one, two, three, four, five. So that's 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 where you want to be, right there. Okay. So and it's um, big Indian, so you don't have to worry about little Indian or anything like that, which is which is nice. So, so you check, so so you check the odd byte. So one, two, three, four, five, and you make sure that this lower byte is even. Okay. So ho hopefully you ho hopefully you you follow me so far on that. It, you know it's kind of hard to do in your head, but 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 that's where you want to be. Okay. So you do. I really, I really gotta stop clicking on the wrong thing here. Um, so basically, um, let me see here. So you check the bit there. If that byte is not equal to zero, if it's one, if it's odd, you're going to, you're going to branch. You're going to skip this instruction. So instead of adding, so this, so um, these are add quicks. For um, this is that quick long, and you're going to essentially um, change the byte, or you're you're essentially going to increment the program counter that's in the stack. So um, you you take whatever this is you, two plus whatever the stack pointer is referencing, basically. So. If it's not equal, if it's odd, you skip this one. So you're only going to add one. So that makes it even. So so if it's odd, you only add one because you're you're skipping this one. If not, if it's if it's even, and that could happen because maybe you read an um an odd in, uh, a uh, maybe you you read um an address that that was odd from an address that was odd. Okay. So the, the the program counter itself could still be even. 
So if it's even, then, then you don't branch and you just add two. So if you're jumping to an odd location, you add one. If it's an even location for some reason, you just add two try and try to keep the execution moving. So, so again, very genius. The nice thing about this is, is it doesn't disturb um, any um, any uh, registers because you don't want to you don't want to read and write registers. You know, you're um, you want to keep everything kind of undisturbed, and this this just does it compare against the memory directly, which is good. So, so it does a check if it's odd. If it's odd, add one. If it's even, add two. That's basically what it does. So, so let's take a look and see how that works. So, we'll, we'll bring up region again, and this time, we're going to load the, the Genesis ROM. And this time... We're going to do the error fix test. You'll see that it immediately starts to boot. So that's that's a good sign. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull up the debugger and we're going to reset. So we're going to take a quick look and, and see what happens here. So oh, that's a trap instruction. Oh, you know what? I was uh shit. That that's right. I I was um I was running some other tests and. Ah, shit. I need... Is there a way to... Let me see if I can... Let me see if I can fix that really quick. Because... Is there a way to... Hold up. Uh, tools. Wrong view. Oh, hey. Perfect. Give me. Okay. So, I need to just make it quick. I think it is... Ah, uh, fuck. Where is it? Um, hold up. What, what what was the uh what was the address? Hold up. Um, reset. Uh, two two oh six. Okay. So two oh six is what is is what I need to change. Yeah, sorry about that. I I, I forgot that I was running all the tests. Uh, so two zero one two three four. So so this one. Why can't I? Set new value, uh, 206. Hold on, I was here. At 206, um, I think this will work. Uh, and, uh, 6607. Oh, no, 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 not 66, 60. That'll be a branch always, uh, seven bytes ahead, I think. So now, go back into the debugger. I think that'll work. Maybe not. What did I do wrong? I've never had to use the fucking... Hold on one second. Oh, this is bullshit. Hold up. Try again? Uh, so... Yeah, it didn't change anything, did it? Uh, 206. Man, they, they do not make this straightforward, do they? Did that change anything at all? Yeah, it did. So, 6007. Yeah. And then click OK. Now. Reset. There we go. Okay, okay, we're good. We're good. We're good. So, all right. I figured it out. We're good. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Um. So, now, when we... Try to do an legal instruction here. What it's going to do... So, so remember, it basically changes the, the stack pointer. And now you can see that it's going to run that test. So it's going to be like, hey, what's this last bit? What's this, is this last bit? Zero, one. It'll see that it's one. So it's not equal to zero, so, so it's one. So it's going to skip over to 4E. So instead of adding w this twice to where it's adding two it's just, just going to skip over add one and then it's going to return from the exception so so now when it returns instead of going to two zero f it goes to two one zero and it can continue so that's what the correct 
remember, the, the, this is something I had to change. The correct behavior for um, address errors. So, so that is um, group zero exceptions um, in a nutshell, basically. So, let's keep looking at the exceptions that we have to, to, to look at here. So, um, we're going to pause this. So, honestly, that's probably the vast majority of, of this video is, is explaining how I circumvented or, or how I'm able to recover from an address error because it's a, a bit more involved. Everything else is pretty basic. So, um, <clears throat> so, so let's go. Let's keep going here. We got we got illegal instruction. By the way, this is the old vector. This is the new vector when I when I fix the code. So, so now we're going to now we're going to go over group one which is um, like illegal instruction, privilege violation, and the line emulators. So you've probably seen line, um, I think that's eight, I think that's, hold on, eight, nine, line A and line F emulators. So so um, those are for, um, I'll, I'll get into that, we'll, we'll get into that later. But but let's, let's look at illegal instruction. So that's group one. So Whenever you try to return for an exception from, from a group one, um, from 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 a group one exception, basically it doesn't change the program counter, so it keeps trying to execute the same instruction over and over and over again. You don't want that. So what you do is so for four a. That's not. I didn't want to do that. Whoops. Okay, I I hit something. Um, so for four a. Basically. You want to um, <clears throat> excuse me. You want to go here. So basically, you just add two. Yes, I know. I could have. I could have just um, made made it just one instruction and put it somewhere else. But uh, I didn't want to write more code, and this was pretty straightforward. It doesn't really use that much more process processing. Just a few more extra cycles. Not a big deal. So. I mean, again, I could if I really wanted to. Um, one thing that I forgot to mention, uh, I think because I had to use the bathroom, that's right. Um, and I, when I came back, I kind of lost track of where I was. So I, I remember I was talking about that. It's like, why do, you, why, why, do you, why do you put this here? And it's because if we look back here, you see um, hex. So from hex 40, to uh, 5C, it's reserved. So it's not used for anything. It's, it's for future use by Motorola. And the nice thing is you can execute inside this block. So that's, so that's where I put the code because um, it's small enough to where I can contain it inside the header. So it you can put it in any Genesis game and, and it's not going to care. You're not going to, you don't have to worry about overwriting valid code unless the Genesis game does something weird where it, where it puts code there for some reason, but, but I doubt it. I, I highly doubt it, but uh, you got to be careful with that. So, um, yeah, I forgot to mention that because I, I had to hit the restroom. Um, so, so in any case, I'm going to click the right thing here this time. Okay. Um, so you add to and return to exception, and and that just that essentially treats the the illegal instruction like a no operation. It's like okay, we fucked up. We're going to try the next instruction and see what happens. So, of course, you know this no operation does take a bit of time to execute, but but it's not that much. Um, so if anything, it might slow the game down a little bit. So. Um, so next up is division by zero, and it's exactly what you think it is. So if you use the division instruction and uh, the divisor is zero, then it's going to flip this instruction. And since it increments the program counter when this happens, um, then all you need to do is just um, jump over to return from exception, and it'll, and it'll just keep going. So that's kind of the nice thing. Check exception. I can't remember what that does, but that's also group two. So it, if if we look here, where's uh, see check zero divide. Those are group two. So um, so it's just normal instruction ex execution. So um, <clears throat> so basically you just RTE it and just keep 
keep going about your business. So that's nice. Um, let's let's keep looking at the other exceptions here. Trap V, same thing. Group two. So so trap instructions are are uh, essentially used for um, for when you're trying to debug and and you put traps in your code to figure out exactly what's what's doing. But they're but they're group two. They're they're just kind of treated almost like normal instructions. So you just return from the exception and you keep going. Now, there are a lot of trap vectors in 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 the, in the 68k. So so if you look under this, like all the way down here, starting from 80, these are all trap exceptions. So each of the each of these has its own respective opcode basically. So I don't I haven't encountered a Genesis game that does this so yes i do have a patch that that takes care of all this but there could be games that that use this as some sort of quick call like um how z80 games tend to use that a lot i don't know i don't think any genesis games does but it could um so so when you're patching you might want to look at addresses 80 to um 80 to C0 to make sure that, that there isn't anything weird going on there. Probably isn't. I wouldn't worry about it too much. It's mostly used for debugging, but there's nothing stopping a developer for using it for something clever as, you know, as in some sort of optimization, because I'm pretty sure that these exceptions um, don't don't really tax the CPU much. They're, 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 they're a lot quicker than, than like a branch or a jump, so um, maybe i'd have to i'd have to look up timings for that but i could see it being used for that so 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 that takes care of all the trap um exceptions so what else do we got um so yeah, let, let me go back here actually so uh privilege violation uh i think i was able to trigger this i think privilege violations can be triggered in um in the genesis i i'd, I'd have to look it up again um, but I think I was able to trigger it. And a privilege violation is when you essentially access or write to a register that you shouldn't be accessing at, at that at, at that point. Um, I believe. Let me see here. I think. Let's see. Uh, I think it uh, interrupts. Uh, Spurious interrupts. Uh, instruction traps. Illegal instructions. Privilege violations. So, so um, doing any of these. Apparently, um, like like running and running a uh, RTE instruction. I think that's how I checked it. Returning like running an RTE instruction when you're not in an exception, for example, will trigger a privilege violation. So, so um, doing things that you shouldn't be doing when you're under normal operation, basically. Um, so, basically, um, that's what will happen. And and just like with illegal instruction, um, you have to adjust the the counter and like add, add to and return. So yeah, um, that's essentially privilege violation. So so I'm gonna quickly run through these because you kind of already know how how my handler works. So but you might be curious what these exceptions are. So. That's why I'm going through. I can't remember what uh, CHK does, though. Check instruction. Um, I'd have to find it somewhere. Where the fuck is it? Tracing. Eh, it's something. Bus error. We already went over bus error. So, address error. We already returned from exception. So, um, anyway, let me see here. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Oh. Oh, uh, and those are instruction times. All I know is that check instruction, you know, you 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 just return norm normally, not a big deal. But it is an instruction where you would have to return. So, um, what else? Uh, so trace exception, kind kind of the same thing, where it's it's just for debugging line emulators. Again, th those are to emulate instructions. Uh, with, with with that specific large byte, so basically the high nibble of the high byte. If it's um, a, 
it'll trigger this. If it's F, it'll trigger this. So A, X, X, X would, will trigger this. F, X, X, X will trigger this. So, and I, I think from what I understand, like I said, it's it's used to emulate other instructions from like, um, for more advanced processors, I think. I, I I don't fully understand it, but but that's kind of the gist. So so any of those instructions, you have to just like illegal instructions and privilege violations, you have to add to and return. So uh, does it say that in? Uh, let me see. Does, does it say that in in group one? Trace interrupt illegal privilege. Um. Yeah, it doesn't mention emulator. Um. Let me see if we could find that in emulator. Yep, yeah, emulator. Yeah, it yeah, only really mentions it in, in the exception vector assignment. I don't know why it doesn't mention it elsewhere. That's kind of dumb. But but just just note that, that it is considered um, a group one. So from from my testing, at least. Which was very easy to test because all you got to do is just write an instruction that starts with A or F and you're good. So, um, so yeah. Um, format error, by the way, um, is is for a newer processor, so don't don't worry about that. Everything else is uh, essentially like reserved, and then you've got. Oh, I I I should mention interrupts. So um, I keep doing that. Um, yeah, I should probably. Yeah, fuck it. Okay. Um, so that's after everything else here. So these are exceptions. So I think the spurious exception is kind of like an interrupt request in, in, in a way. But see, the thing is, those are triggered by outside sources. So there's no way for a corruption to trigger an interrupt, basically, is what I'm trying to say. So that's, that, that, that's what traps are for, basically. So the, these are, these are kind of like software interrupts, in a way. So, um, so there's no way to trigger this or this, these aren't tied to anything. Now, 4 and 7 are, or I'm sorry, 4 and 6 are tied to H and V blank, respectively. So, um, basically, um, what that means is that um, you don't want to touch these values at all. So, so, address 70 and 78, if you change that at all, it will break the game. Especially B blank, especially B blank, H blank, you might be able to get away with uh, if if the game doesn't use it, but um, it it definitely uses V blank, so so yeah, you got to be careful. Um, so that's why you never want to touch those. And and my IPS patch doesn't touch them, so you don't have to worry about that. And then everything else is you know trap exceptions, and and so so we already do a return from exception with those. But that is essentially how um, how my exception handler works so um, hopefully that made sense I think for those that are very technically inclined it does for but for just your 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 common uh, watcher that doesn't know anything about programming it probably went over the head but hopefully you understood some of it but um, that is essentially how everything works so um, hopefully this was very enlightening for you. Uh, the reason why I made this is because the next game that I am doing is Ghouls and Ghosts for, uh, the Sega Genesis. So, I, I figured I would give a quick stream on how all that works. That's why the, the last stream was, was to circumvent a checksum, because you kind of have to do that when, when doing corrupting as well. Or at least the, the corrupting that I do. If you're, if you're from the RTE community... Wait, RT, RTC, not RTE. Sorry, I, I, I've been reading too much a, um, 68K code. If you're from the RTC community, if you, you tend to do corruptions while the game is running, so you don't corrupt the, corrupt the ROM file directly like how I do. So you wouldn't really, ha really have to worry about, about um, checksums. But but this this is definitely important because it, um, it affects both RTE and... Um, and if you're just corrupting the ROM file itself. I'm starting to lose my voice. Um, <clears throat> but with that said, I'm probably gonna I'm probably gonna fire up a game. And um, I think tomorrow I'm gonna start pulling up lo looking over um, Ghouls of Ghosts, finding all the you know, the compressed tiles. 
I won't really um, make a video on that. I don't think um, unless unless someone really wants to see it. If you want to see how I do these things, I would look at my TurboGrafx-16 video where, where, where I kind of go over how I find um, compressed tiles. Um, I don't feel like I need to go over it again. So so I'm probably just going to... Again, if, if someone really wants to, to, to see it, I, I may consider it, but um, it's just going to be boring <laughs> disassembly for unless you find that interesting. So, But in any case, um, I think that'll about do it. Hopefully, hopefully it wasn't too crazy but um see you soon uh, you guys look forward to the go ghouls and ghost corruption hopefully either the either sometime next month i think hopefully if if i have time but until then bye for now